Okay, this little section of work is about the gas laws. Uh, so we're going to look at pressure and volume and temperature in gases and how they create pressure and how all those things relate to each other, both in terms of the bulk properties of gases and in terms of the individual particles. So that's quite a lot to do. So we're going to just start off with um, a, a law called Gay-Lussac's law. This relates pressure in a gas to temperature. We're going to look at how a gas actually creates pressure in the first place and describe an experiment to look at gay lussacs law and we're going to try to describe the relationship between the temperature of a gas and the pressure it creates. So the first thing we need to understand to do this is that um, we're just doing how the pressure is affected by the temperature. We need to keep the volume of the gas the same otherwise life gets a bit too complicated for us at the moment. So this is a relationship that relates the pressure of a gas to its temperature. So we need to know how does a gas create pressure. Well, it creates pressure because the gas particles collide with the sides, the walls of the container that it's in. How does the temperature affect that? Well, if we look at a hot gas and a cold gas, here's our two, just one particle in each container. Okay, you'll see this is the hot one. We've heated it up here. You'll notice it's moving faster. I'm sure you'll remember that from uh, GCSE. But why does this create more pressure? Well, there are two factors, so you have to be a little bit careful here. One is that there are more collisions per second, so this is hitting the wall, or if we just look at the top wall, for example, this one hits it more times in the, in the same amount of time. right? But also, when it hits the side, that collision is harder. Okay, Pressure is created by changing the momentum of this gas particle from going up to going down. If that change of momentum is bigger, then there must be a bigger force applied. Okay, So two factors that affect the pressure created by a gas particle as its temperature is increased. Okay, Here's our little experiment to do this. Um, so we've got here some gas inside this flask, a little tube round here, and then this, uh, you might have seen this experiment, is mercury. And what we can do is if we keep this here fixed, then the volume inside here stays the same. So we're keeping one of our possible variables the same by keeping the volume of gas the same. What's going to happen when we heat it up? Well, you might imagine that it will expand. So what we do is we increase the head of pressure on this side. So there's more pressure now, and with more pressure, we can keep the volume the same. Okay, So we're increasing the temperature without allowing the volume to increase. Okay, We can measure this head of mercury that we require at different temperatures and uh, therefore we can work out what pressure will keep the volume the same as we increase the temperature. If you do that experiment, you get a graph that looks a little bit like this. So here's the temperatures that we might be able to do from naught up to maybe 80 degrees C. And here's the total pressure. That's the pressure that we start off with, the atmospheric pressure, plus the extra head of pressure that we have to use in order to keep the volume the same. The crucial thing to notice about this graph is it's heading down so if we could cool it down far enough, eventually we get to the stage where the volume of the gas, sorry, the pressure of the gas would be zero. Think about this. Well, why would the pressure of a gas be zero? Well, it must mean the particles have stopped moving altogether. As the gas cools down, the particles are going slower and slower and slower and slower and slower. Well, eventually they can't go any slower. They must stop. That's this temperature here. Okay, minus 273 degrees C. This is absolute zero. Okay, so this doesn't look like a proportional relationship if we use Celsius for the scale because it's not going through the um, origin. But if we moved our origin over to here at minus 273, then it would be a proportional relationship. So what gay lussac said is that the pressure is proportional to the temperature, but you must be measuring the temperature in what's called a thermo thermodynamic temperature or the absolute temperature, which is measured in Kelvin. Okay, hopefully you've come across thermodynamic temperatures before, but if not, 0 degrees C is 273 Kelvin. 100 degrees C is 373 Kelvin. So all you have to do is take the temperature in degrees C and add on 273, and you'll get a Kelvin temperature. And then, as long as you're using that, the pressure of a gas will be proportional to its temperature. Okay, just a little bit more on that. So you might, some people think if you take a gas at 20 degrees C and you heat it to 40 degrees C, that's twice as hot. Hopefully you can see now that's not true because 20 degrees C is 293 Kelvin, 40 degrees C is 313 Kelvin. 
in terms of an absolute temperature, the gas isn't actually all that much hotter.